Lord, God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. When I left my house, it said that it was 107 outside. Hope that was a min- mis- I'll say a misprint, but a misreading, but I-, I think it's pretty close. Hallelujah. But God is good. Um, I commend you all for being here today in the heat. You're hungry for the Lord. Uh, it is evident in that, and, and uh, the Bible says if you're hungry and you thirst for his righteousness, you shall be filled. And that's the promise from Almighty God, and I'm excited to be here to deliver the Word of God. I have the honor to do that. Um, It's been eight years. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. We'll be celebrating on the 25th. I hope you all could be here to celebrate with us. Hallelujah. God has done a tremendous work, and, and He has done a work in our family, in, in, in my family, so uh, my wife, myself, my children, uh, and to those of the congregation, of course, but to God be all the glory. Just continue, Pastor Richard said, stay the course and watch God move. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank those for the faithful tithers, uh, those that bring their offerings, and those that commit to the building fund. Uh, praise the Lord. May God bless your life. And I believe something uh, Pastor Richard ministered today, I don't know if you caught it or not, it said a tithe of the land. Did you hear that? How many know that it's not just one thing, they, they, they tithe of everything they had. It said tithe of the land. And I've been asked in, in different um Different people have asked me, so what is your perception of the tithe? I said, I don't have a perception of the tithe. What does the Bible say? That, that's all that matters. And it says to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may, food, there may be food in my house, says the Lord. And from there, he continues to do the work. So let's throw our opinions out and let's see what the Word of God has to say, because that's what's going to maintain and that's what's going to hold in the end so with no further ado let's open up our bibles to the book of habakkuk it's going to take a while to find that book right habakkuk because if i say naaman jonah micah it's your it's probably going to even take you deeper into that oh my god but the book of Hag- habakkuk i'm sorry habakkuk and you may have to go to the table of if you have a instrument or a, should I say a device, probably a little bit easier. The book of Habakkuk, Old Testament, written by the prophet Habakkuk. Many are there, say amen. Or those that are not, say oh my. Habakkuk, chapter 2, begin reading in verse 1, you're having trouble, I believe it's up here behind me on the screen. Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected but at the end it will speak and it will not lie though it tarries wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry let's pray Heavenly Father Lord we just thank you Lord for your presence that continues to manifest in this place, Lord. I pray right now that your word would deposit, would manifest itself within our lives. We hunger and thirst for righteousness, and your word guarantees us that we shall be filled. We invite your presence 
into our lives, into our circumstances, Lord. We call it the things that are not as though they were. We know, God, with man this is impossible. But with you all things are possible, Lord. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do with our lives, God. What you're going to do today in our hearts, in our mindsets, as your word changes, God. It, it elevates us to a whole new level, God. A relationship, a, a true relationship with you, Lord. And that's what we long for. We're careful to give you all the praise and all the glory is yours and all the saints of God say amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. And as you're all hoping, I'm not going to keep you here long, but we're going to allow God to do what he has to do. I believe God has something special for someone here today. Habakkuk chapter 2. Sometimes when a Pro, a prophetic word is spoken and it's spoken in to your spirit some of you have had a prophetic word spoken to you but this is a prophetic word of God that demonstrates that God is gonna come through and when he speaks into our lives we have to take heed so when the prophetic word is spoken it seems like your spirit knows that it has been waiting for a specific word. Your spirit, it knows when that word comes forth, that it has been waiting for that word to come forth. And when it hears that word, your life begins to make sense of everything that you've ever been through. And it's not going to be based on circumstances or situations in your life that makes you believe that God has a purpose for your life. But it is on the Word that makes it worth everything. The Word makes it work worth everything in your relationship with Christ that you've ever been through. That's how God operates. I can handle this now because... I understand why. So many of us have whys in our life. And it's not till we come to the pur purpose and place in our life where we hear that prophetic word that it all makes sense. And you understand why. And not until we come to that place in our lives that we're really going to be, or we're really going to activate in the purpose and the place where God has for our life and in Habakkuk chapter 2 the word of God says I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected this is the prophet Habakkuk speaking to Almighty God Habakkuk has been in a conversation with God because he does not understand what's going on, how the righteous are not prospering in the land and that the evil continues to prosper and the wicked continues to prosper. So it's even confusing to the prophet. So don't find it strange when things happen in our lives and it's confusing to you and I. So we are not alone. The prophet Habakkuk, he wants answers. Why are people that are sinning, that are wicked, continue to prosper and to do good? And how is it that the righteous are living bad? That was a situation where he was in where the Babylonians and the Chaldeans had taken over the land. So Habakkuk says, I want answers. I'm assuming just like you and I, we, we, have, we want answers from the Lord. And he says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what will I answer when I am corrected. What two great positions to put ourselves in. Are we willing to put ourselves in the situations like that when things look all bad 
Are we willing to ask the Lord, I will wait as you correct me. I will position myself. I will put myself on a rampart, on a high place. I will position myself to hear from you. And that's what Habakkuk is saying. And then the Lord answered to him and said, write the vision. Write it down. And make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. That is the word of God. That's an awesome. And right now, if it's not doing something into your spirit, you need to examine yourself. Because God has said to write it down. Matter of fact, write it on tablets. And it's going to come to pass. But it's going to be on an appointed time. There's many of us that are waiting on the appointed time in our life. He says, he doesn't say the end. Not at the end are you going to, not in the middle. Not three quarters of the way. Not when you can see the finish line. He says, at the appointed time time it will speak and it will not lie though it tarries wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry I'm reading it like what God you're saying two different things here Thought it would tarry, but you got to wait for it? You're going to tarry, you're going to wait for it. It shall not tarry, but it's going to surely come, though it tarries. So you imagine Habakkuk is being transparent. Some of the, kind of some of the things that we go through in life. But God said it will surely come. So is it going to tarry or not? Let's be real. Is it going to tarry? How long do we, do we have to wait, God? I've been going through this a long time. So how long is it going to take? That's, that's an answer for, for some of us. Why, God, why, why must you always make things hard? Why, why can't you just be simple? Why do you speak to us in, in riddles? In parables? You answer a question with a question. This is what Habakkuk is saying. And God, we, we stress out because we don't know. We don't know the appointed time or, or what you have for us. We stress out because we don't know what you're talking about, God. This is what the prophet Habakkuk is writing. And I'm going to read verse 4. It says, it's not on the screen. It says, although it's not, or behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Powerful word. I want you to play or pay close attention to the third verse of the text. For the vision is not yet for an appoint for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but in the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come and it will not tarry. So today it's my assignment to tell you, stop stressing. Stop stressing. The just shall live by his faith. And that we understand faith based on what is written about faith we know that faith is a substance 
of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We understand that there's no way that we can get faith without hearing about it. That's what the Bible says in the book of Roman. It tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. So then we have faith when we hear the word of God. It tells us that we can have faith. We do not have faith before that. How many of us had faith before we heard the word of God? Because the Lord has literally put that in our spirit. It's like once that hits our spirit, it's locked in our spirit. And we know that. We know that we can make it through life. And that nothing can separate us from what God has given us. The word of God that he has placed in as locked in. And it's already struck or stuck in our spirit. If we had never heard that, that would be one thing. If God would have never have spoken that into our lives, we could just kind of walk through life with no expectation, doing whatever we want to do. But that's not the case. Because God has divinely spoken that and has told you that it's going to be better than this. How many of us has God has told us it's going to be better than this? That's a divine promise from God. But if you had never have heard it, then maybe you never would have believed that. But there would have had expectations. You would have had no expectation for anything to get better. Because I wasn't even thinking about anything like that, you might tell yourself. And all I could think about is when. When and how the breakthrough is coming. How many are in this position today and asking yourself, when is my breakthrough coming? When is my breakthrough actually coming? When is the deliverance, when is it coming? If I would never have heard it, then I wouldn't be looking out the door. If I never would have heard it, I wouldn't have been always looking at, in that mailbox. If I never have heard it, I would have never been laboring for the victory that God has spoken about. How can you get into the place of victory when the spirit and everything is apart from the spiritual realm that's actually taking place? How does that happen? How do we get to the point where we want to be faithful? How do we get to that point? We want to believe what the Word of God says, but the longer it takes to get to what He said, how many of us actually can wait for that place? It's called patience. We got to have the patience. And with that, we seem to wither in that Word. The times that we are living at may be partial blame with that. Everything we want in life seems to be like right now. How many feel like that? We live in a microwave generation where we want things right now. We don't want, we don't want to wait for things anymore. We want things right now. We don't have to wait for nothing anymore. We want everything now. We want to celebrate everything. We want a celebration for a graduation of preschool. Of kindergarten. We want to celebrate things early. We want to celebrate preschool, kindergarten. We want to throw a, a, a party for that. Then it's first grade, and then it's second grade, and then it's third grade. And then it's fourth grade? How about rewarding them when they're truly finished with something? We don't want to wait. How about a box of crayons? And we can tell them to push on. We don't want to wait. 
We want to celebrate with expensive gifts and, it, and expensive celebrations. But that's our reasonable service. You can come talk to me when you graduate 8th grade or maybe high school or, or get a college degree. Right? Then we really got something to talk about. We suffer for six months and we want God to give us everything that we ever asked for. That's how we are. We think we've accomplished everything that God has wants us or God wants us to do within our life. But we live in a generation that wants everything right now. And when we can't have everything right now, we throw tantrums. Oh, come on. We throw tantrums. And have you ever seen an adult throw a tantrum? My son is two years old and he throws a tantrum. But he's two years old. Justified for that kind of stuff, right? But when you're 45 years old or you're 50 or 60 or 70, that's not a good look. Oh my God, God, why? Why? But we go home first, right? We're too civilized to throw a tantrum in public. We go home, right? We close the door. And we call it prayer. Come on, somebody. I was lying in my face for about an hour and a half, girl. That's not prayer, that's a tantrum. We want things right now. That's how we work. That's the real problem. The real problem is we don't want to wait for nothing anymore. And when God speaks something into our spirit, we have to have the ability to wait on God. We got one hand clap. Patiently waiting for the answer. The prophet Habakkuk can't even figure out even with his prophetic mantle that he has, why are the wicked prospering? That's his cry to the Lord. He cannot understand how the Babylonians and the Chaldeans have taken over. But they're not suffering. And we're doing all the sacrificing and all the things that it, it needs to take place. And we're the one being penalized. We're the one suffering. Probably how the, the committee feels, right? No amens. They're saying they're, why is, why are they prospering? And we're doing the right thing and we're suffering. This is the prayer of the saint that is tired of waiting. That is asking God, what, what, what do you have for us after this? And God starts having a conversation with Habakkuk. And he gets his first answer. Habakkuk gets his first answer from God. And when he goes back and he asks him another question. And he waits for the answer. And the word of God says that Habakkuk goes to a high place. That he sets himself on a rampart. He goes into the watchtower and he waits for God's answer. When you've been waiting on an answer from the Lord, that He has spoken in your spirit and you know it's from God, you must go into a high place. I said you must go into a high place. You cannot be where the common people are. 
I said, you cannot be where the common people are. Where they're putting seeds of doubt in your mind. You cannot be in that situation. Trying to tell you that the promise that you heard, that the spirit that you know that it's not going to come to pass. That I don't know why you keep pressing that the word of God that you heard, is it isn't going to happen in your life. You cannot be a, around them type of individuals in your life that are speaking negative thoughts and making you second guess the purpose of God in your life. You got to separate from friends. You're going to have to separate from family. Oh my God. If you have to isolate yourself, some of you God has put you in a season of isolation to get away from the familiar. Are you hearing me? To get away from all those familiar voices. That you don't even recognize anymore. All you hear is a voice that you don't even recognize the voice of God in your life anymore. We got to get in that place. We got to go to that high place. Habakkuk understood and, and realized he had to get higher to hear from God. He had to set himself apart. God wants us to get us in a place that we have to get so high that we don't hear anybody but Him. we got to put ourselves in a position to hear from God. To get every filthy imagination out of your spirit. Your, your old way of thinking. we got to get all that stuff. Just But you're going to have to do that if you want a God to do a new thing in your life. Because God wants to do a new thing. In your life but you're gonna have to separate if you want that answer from God the answer is not down here the answer is from above that's where the answer is glory to God somebody say I got to go higher even though I don't feel like it I got to go higher Even though I feel like laying down and just dying, I got to go higher. My spirit don't let me rest because the spoken word that is wrapped in my spirit, it's not going to let me go. I can't sleep, I can't get no rest because the spirit of God is dealing with your life. I can't get comfortable. I know you can't. Because the Spirit of God is dealing. When I go around my old friend, I can't get comfortable. Because the Spirit of God has wrapped Himself around your spirit. My family doesn't even understand me. Of course not. When I go to the reunions, I'm the black sheep. They're talking about one thing and I'm talking about another. Have you been there? They're talking about the past and I'm talking about my future. I got to get to a higher place. I can't stay here anymore. I can't live like that anymore. I got to get to a high place. I got to get up there. If the elevator is broken, then take the stairs. But you got to get to that high place. You got to get to that place where God is calling you. I got to go higher. If I stay here, I'm going to be in a hot mess. If I stay in this situation, I'm going to be broken. I'm going to be emotionally, mental, and spiritually broken. I cannot let the enemy bombard me and try to take what the Lord has deposited in my life. 
If I stay in that place, I'm going to die. And so the prophet says, I got to go up there. I'm going to set my place on the rampart. I got to hear God correctly. I've already heard him correct me. But I, I got to hear God correctly. That's what God wants in our life. Everybody else is getting blessed, but I'm in the same place. And the difference is that I'm down here and they're up here. That's the difference. They're up and I'm down. No matter how you get there, you got to go higher. Expect to be alone. If you're going to go higher, then expect to be alone. God, I'm alone and, and, and I don't understand. You don't have time for me. We're throwing tantrums as children of God. But we got to go to a higher place. I'm alone, God. Well, you don't have time to be around anybody else. You're trying to hear from God. You want an answer from God. You're waiting on God. I need to know why I grew up without a father I need an answer I don't have the time to replace the time that I didn't have with my father so I need an answer God I need you to give me an answer I don't need a relationship I need an answer I need an answer from you God when I get a, an answer from you, then I can get a relationship. Come on, somebody. When I get an answer, then maybe I can hold a job. When I get an answer, but it won't be until you get that answer. The prophet said, I can't take it anymore. I need an answer. So I got to go higher. I'm going to that high place. He said, I will stand my watch. I'm going to go to the rampart. I'm going to go up to the tower. I got to go higher. And there's nobody up here with me but God. I got to get alone with God. If you don't hear anything or don't get anything more from this message, hear this, that you got to get alone with God. How many in here got to get alone with God? Just God. There is where you'll get your answer. I got people yelling at me up here to get down here. I'm not coming down until I get my answer. You got all kinds of demonic oppression, depression, and demons trying to pull you down before you get that answer. So you got to stay up there. They're telling you, you've been up there too long. Come down. But I'm not coming down until I get that answer. The devil's telling us we don't need an answer. Just come back down. Come back down to that addition. Come back down to that relationship. Come back down to those familiar places. The devils are distracting us 
And that's coming from the forces of hell. Telling you just come back to the arms of distraction. You don't need an answer. The devil is a liar. I'm going to stay up there as long as it takes to hear from God. Since he said it, I'm going to have it as long as it takes. So he goes up and see what happens. So Habakkuk goes up and the Lord comes down. That's how it works. Habakkuk goes up and the Lord comes down. When he gets up, he says that all the sacrifices... All that sacrifice you took to get to me, I'm going to reward you. I'm coming down. That's as high as you can go, so I'm coming down here to meet you. That's how the Lord works. He says when you sacrifice all that to get up here, that's the highest place you can go, that's where I'm going to meet you. Somebody's got to give the Lord a hand of praise. That's where I'm going to come down and become Emmanuel. God is with us. I'm coming down into the midst of your situation. Because you went up, I'm coming down. So what God says right now is now you got to write it down. Write the vision down. Write it down on tablets, he says. Everything that I've spoken to you so that you're able, so that who hears it is able to run with it. Are you going to run with it? Here's why you need to write it down. Because you're going to have to remember that to a T. That's why you're going to have to write it down. That's why the Bible says to write it down. And if you don't write it down, the enemy's going to come with a twist and a lie. To fool you out of the blessing. He'll come to distract you. He'll twist it up and you'll making, start making up stuff yourself to justify what you're going through. To justify the situations that will fit your life that you're living at that time. Come on somebody. I wish I had a witness. You'll start making up stuff. But when you write it down, you can go back to it and you're saying, uh-uh, that, that ain't it. You can go back to it, I said. And you can say, no, 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 that's not it. God is not the author of confusion. That's not it. Just that you haven't written it down. So that you can get clarification on that. I know you're believing for a husband or a wife. Hallelujah. But write it down. Write it down plain. That way when you see that knucklehead comes, you can pull away or you can pull out that tablet and you can say, no. My bad. I thought I was talking to the right person. But I'm sorry about that. That's my bad. Write down. The vision on the tablet. Write it down. That way you don't go starting a new business with a crooked partner that takes you in another direction that you truly wanted. Write it down so that you can make it plain. So that he who reads it can run. I don't have time to get it wrong anymore. I said, we don't have time to get it wrong anymore. I can't go through this again. You got to be 30 to get that. Or over 30 at least, right? 
I can't go through this again. I got to get stuff right. Come on, somebody. I can't get fired again. Right? I'm losing time. I can't get burned on a maybe again. Come on, somebody. I need to know the plan for my life. That the Bible says that late, the latter is greater than the former. Do you believe that? I mean, do you really believe that? Somebody needs to give the Lord a hand of praise for that. Because that is the word of God. I got to write it down. Because it's coming. You got to write it down because it's coming. It's going to be time to run with the vision that God has given you. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Habakkuk. He said, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart. You set yourself on high to hear from God. Expect an answer and watch to see what he will say to me and I will answer when I am corrected. And your answer is, you know, God, you're right. I thank you for that. I thank you for not giving that to me at that time. Or is that just me? I thank you God for correcting me. But I would have never have found that out unless I waited. I put myself on a position to hear from you and I waited on you God and you gave me an answer maybe the answer I didn't want to know or believe but God you gave me an answer but now he says write the vision and make it plain on tablets write it down write it down that he may run who reads it for the vision is yet for an appointed time not when you think not when you want it maybe not even when you need it but that appointed time only comes from God and he's always right on time let's give the Lord a hand of praise And he says, but at the end, it will speak. It will speak. And we're far from the end. He said, but in the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, that means it may take a while. I didn't say a little or a long. Neither did God. And when God is silent on it, that's how we should be. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It's telling me when you least expect it, when we least expect it, when we're doing all that we have to do to honor the Word of God and to fulfill the Word of God, when we're on that course and we write the vision and we make it plain, 
He's saying, though it tarries, maybe to you it seems like a long time. The Bible says that a thousand days is like a day to the Lord. And one day is like a thousand. So God's in a different clock than you and I. But it's, it's time to start ticking. It's time to reevaluate our purpose for living for God. If the prophet Habakkuk had some questions for God, I believe the people of God here have a lot of questions also. But thank God for the questions and the answers that he has given us for his people, his children, to evaluate, for them to correspond with the spirit that he gives with us, that we understand and we understand the vision. And the first thing to do, whether we understand or we're having trouble, is go higher. Always go higher with God. Take your prayer life to another dimension, if there even is one. And if there's not one, start one. And don't stop there, continue to go higher. With that simple principle, you'll become explosive. Enoch is gone from us because the Bible said that he pleased God and God took him. Because he pleased God. But God is faithful. And I believe that he is taking us in a deeper, not only a relationship with him, a deeper relationship with him. And it's going to require deep change. It's going to require sacrifice. It's not selfishness, it's selflessness. But if we apply, which was the vision or the theme for this church at the beginning of the year, to apply the word of God in our life and watch that there's still time before we enter 2023 if we apply the word of God to our life we'll be kingdom kingdom shakers we will be instruments of righteousness for God on a whole different level called to do what we were meant to do not going in circles with our lives wondering what's next or what do I do. There's something about us that is empty without that drive for God. We can try to stick it in with other things and make time pass. And shutting the door behind us and trying to speed up the time with emptiness. But that's not how God and why God created us. He created us to go higher and higher. Remember that old song? Wish we had that right now. Live Jesus higher, higher and higher. But that's what we're called to do. Is to go higher and seek the face of God. Let's give the Lord a hand praise and let's stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I wasn't going to keep you long, but I wasn't going to let you go until the Spirit moved in this place. And I believe God moved in a tremendous way. But it's still our, our choice. Are we going to go and do what the prophet Habakkuk instructed us to do? Are we going to do what the Word of God requires us to do? Or are we going to go back to our familiar ways, to familiar voices, the destruction that lies 
for us. So much work to be done in the kingdom. So much love to give to this fallen world. So much things. So much work to do. Little time. The Bible says that. The enemy is furious because he knows that the time is short. He comes to pluck the word from our heart before it goes in and it roots. So right now we're going to praise God. We're going to use the weapons of our warfare. We're going to magnify the king at the holy of holies. Where we can enter in to the throne of God. The Bible says we can come through the throne of God. We don't have to go to a mediator. We don't have to go through another channel. But we can go straight to the throne of God. Hallelujah. And that's what we're going to do right now as a church. We're going to go straight to the throne of God. Hallelujah. God, we want more of you, Lord. We don't want a show and we don't want entertainment. But we want you, Lord. We want more of you. We're going to go to a higher place, God, in our life. We're going to position ourselves to hear from you. Because we want to complete what you started. We know you are the completer, God, but we want to ob- abide. We want to obey, Lord. We know that we didn't choose you, Lord. We would make the wrong choice even at that, but that you chose us to bear fruit. Matter of fact, your word says that you have ordained us to bear fruit. And fruit that should last. We're going to give you praise and glory. Because your word says that after that we 